Development Company facilitated the renovation of 127 shops in the market along with associated external works. The remaining section of the market has deteriorated and is in need of urgent rehabilitation. Under this contract, repairs will be done to the roof and there will be installation of new roof sheeting, general repairs and painting. TPD Co. will provide the funding for this project, while the UDC will provide project management and technical services. The repair work is expected to commence at the end of this month and will run for four months. This week, global leaders in the IT industry will gather in Kingston to discuss employment and business opportunities with young Caribbean tech entrepreneurs. More than 50 teams from Jamaica, Barbados, Dominica, Haiti, Antigua, Trinidad and Tobago, and St. Kitts will participate. They will pitch new mobile apps created for this competition and will compete for a U.S. $10,000 grand prize. The event is helping to address youth unemployment and an integrated Caribbean response, including the creation of a hub of innovation. And we'll take questions on that. We have Jerry McDaniel from the World Bank with us, with, and he will assist with your questions. Cabinet has approved overseas travel for Tourism Minister Dr. The Honorable Wicker McNeil to attend the International Tourism Exchange ITB in Berlin, Germany, and meetings in London over the period March 2 to 7, 2014. ITB Berlin is the largest tourism trade show in the world and is a prime marketplace and driving force behind the international tourism industry. The event showcases hotels, tourist boards, tour operators, airlines, among others, related to the travel industry. Minister McNeil will be accompanied by Director of JAMVAC, Mr. Paul Pennycook, Chairman of the JTB, Mr. Dennis Morrison, and Director of Tourism, Mr. John Lynch. In London, the Minister will convene meetings with tour operators and other strategic partners. The approximate cost of travel is 4.2 million Jamaican dollars. Cabinet has approved overseas travel for Health Minister Dr. The Honorable Fenton Ferguson to attend the board meeting of the Global Fund between March 3 and 7 in Jakarta, in Indonesia. The Minister will be accompanied by the Director of the HIV AIDS Program in the Ministry of Health. Minister Ferguson is the alternate board member for Latin America and the Caribbean on the Global Fund. Expenses for ministers' travel, the ministers' travel are being met by the Global Fund. The Global Fund provides funding support for HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria projects around the world. Cabinet has approved the nomination of Mrs. Carlene Gardner for re-election to the International Civil Service Commission for the period 2015 to 2018. The elections for the ISCS will take place in November 2014 at the 69th session of the UN General Assembly in New York. Ms. Gardner currently serves on the ISCS, having been elected for the period 2011 to 2014. The International Civil Service Commission is an independent expert body. It was set up by the UN General Assembly in 1974 to regulate and coordinate conditions of service of staff within the UN and its specialized agencies. It seeks to promote and maintain high standards in the international civil service and makes recommendations with respect to conditions of service standards conditions of service, standards of recruitment, salary scales, entitlements and benefits, training and other human resource policy issues. And finally, Cabinet has approved the appointment of a new Board of Directors for the Postal Corporation of Jamaica for the period February 13, 2014 to February 12, 2016. The Board will be chaired by Mr. Lance Hilton, Attorney at Law. And as you would know, the Postal Corporation oversees the management of Jamaica's postal services. And as I said earlier, we have with us Dr. The Honorable Wicker McNeil, our Minister of Tourism and Entertainment, and he will make a brief statement and then we'll take your questions. Dr. McNeil. Thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, our government has been making a 
concerted effort to diversify and develop new markets for our tourism industry. One important initiative has been the relaxation of visa requirements for nationals. Already, visa requirements have been lifted for a number of countries, including Colombia, Panama, Venezuela, Russia, the Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, Slovakia, and the Ukraine. This strategy has borne fruit and produced, in many cases, double-digit performances in relatively short periods of time, and demand for travel that has brought new airlift from these markets. For many years, we have recognized China's potential for growth as a tourism source market for Jamaica. But we have remained cognizant of the difficulties entailed in developing this important market. In 2013, Forbes magazine reported China as having 72 million outbound trips for the first three quarters of 2013, representing a year-on-year -year increase of 18 percent. China's expenditure on travel abroad reached 102 billion U.S. dollars in 2012, a 40 percent jump from 2011, making it the number one tourism source market in the world in terms of spending. Up to now, substantial growth in China has not been possible, as many Chinese citizens have to travel to the Jamaican Embassy in Beijing to acquire a visa. In many cases, citizens have to travel great distances just to get this visa. Last year, we attracted 2,420 Chinese tourists, an increase of 15.1% over the previous year, while 2012 showed an increase of 24% over the previous year. The fact is, the numbers are small, but the market has the potential for significant growth. In our if efforts to ease the difficulties experienced while harnessing the market potential of China, Cabinet has now approved the conditional waiver of visa requirements for nationals of the People's Republic of China who travel to Jamaica for tourism purposes for periods of 30 days or less. Our relationship with China has over the years been a very strong, has been very strong and whereas we are looking at further developing and growing tourism trade with China, I believe our strong business connections will cause a strengthening of both sectors. My team and I will now be looking at strengthening the marketing efforts of the JTB, a part of which will involve the Director of Tourism and I attending the Shanghai Trade Show in April. We'll also be continuing our efforts our discussions on developing airlift arrangements from the region. The new visa regime will come into effect in a few weeks' time, as soon as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of National Security and its agencies institute the preliminary processes to effect a smooth implementation. And I would just like to place on record the tremendous assistance, the, the help that we have been getting from the Minister and the Ministry of National Security and its agencies, um, especially PICA, in this whole process that we have been undergoing of opening the markets. They have worked with us um, every step of the way um, in terms of the visa relaxations. And, and just to say that the, the efforts that we have put in place in, in relaxing these visas in no way weakens the border patrol, the border Control. um, controls that we have in place. Um, we are instituting methods, um, certainly electronic and use of other methods, which, which keep our borders as tight as ever, while allowing the ease with which we are able to do business um, to, to increase. So I, I just want to place on record the tremendous assistance that we have gotten from them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll just give a, a brief update on the jet skis. Um, as everyone here knows, uh, the week before last in Parliament, we 
um, I made a statement and we instituted some tighter controls in terms of the use of jet skis. Among those controls was a, a six-month suspension on the importation of all jet skis into Jamaica, both private and um, for commercial purposes. The, the second thing was the clampdown, the cessation of all jet ski activities until we had a chance to regularize the sector and get it under control. The third was the registration of all jet skis in Jamaica. And then the, the fourth was the lifting of the moratorium on the issuing of commercial jet ski licenses to allow us to regularize the, the problems that we had in Jamaica now. Um, I, I want to, to thank the Tourism Product Development Company, Mr. Hickey and, and, and Rea Brady um, from the Maritime Authority who have been um, leading the, the process. And, and just to say that uh, already there have been, the, the, a task force was put in place and they have been meeting and, and doing all the things that are necessary. As of Sunday, advertisements will be put in, in um, both papers, which will indicate where and when registration will be across the island. Um, we recognize the difficulty with the registration, so the, the Maritime Authority, which has responsibility for it, will be moving to the different areas and doing registration and will indicate, um, the press release will indicate the, the venues, the schedule for, for registration and the documents and items that need to be taken in to the authorities. Also, uh, the task force has also indicated that all jet skis now operating will, have, will be issued a decal which will be put on it um, the decals have now arrived in the island. This is an um, example of how the decals will look on the jet skis. This will be a private jet ski. The commercial jet skis will have a C and will be on a, a red background um, for the, the use of the, the jet skis. That process of registration is, is, is ongoing. And at the same time, the task force is also looking at the rules and regulations that will be put into each area. And, um, and, and based on that, we'll shortly, we'll shortly be making some um, announcements as to when the ban will be lifted in certain areas that have complied and, and, and where we feel that the regulations are sufficiently clear. Um, so we, we expect that those will be coming shortly. Thank you, Minister. And before we open the floor for questions, let me just say we have with us from the World Bank, Fabio Putaluga. Hope I have pronounced your name correctly, sir. And he will be deal taking questions if you have such questions on Digital Jam, the Caribbean edition. And we have Jerry McDaniel. Everyone knows him and he's their communications consultant, and Mr. Lethan Grandison, who is their social media consultant. And we also have with us from the Ministry of Investment, Industry and Commerce, M Mrs. Beverly Rose Forbes, and she will take your questions on the scrap metal trade. So we open the floor for questions now. Good morning, Abka, Abka. Abka. the Nationwide News. Um, question for the Honorable Minister of Tourism. Uh, early into the calendar year, um, in terms of stopover arrivals, etc., how are you feeling in terms of that? Well, of course, as you know, last year we um, broke the two million mark for the first time. Our growth has continued. The preliminary figures are showing uh, January was up 4.7 percent in the preliminaries, which is which is good. February we, we seem to be following on that trend. I suspect March may be down a bit, given the movement of Easter, but then April we, we will be up again. We're looking, we're looking at having a, a, a good winter season. Okay, uh, do Jamaicans need a, ch a visa to go to China? 
at present there's a visa requirement to go to China. Okay, any consideration for some sort of relaxation in the spirit of reciprocity? Yes, I think the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are discussions taking place. Oh, there, there are ongoing discussions? Yes. Okay. All right, um, question for the Honorable Minister of Information. <coughs> The Commission of Inquiry, the upcoming West Kingston Commission of Inquiry, I don't know if it was said, perhaps it missed me. Um, in terms of a budget or cost, um, any idea? No, there is, there is no costing yet. Okay. Uh, Velma Hilton, QC, Minister, at this hour, is the administration still intent on using her as a commissioner? I cannot comment on that at this time because we have not had any discussions about that. The list was released following the Governor General's um, approval and therefore we have not met as a cabinet so we haven't discussed it there are, is no discussion with the governor general so I could not have any could not answer that at all but is the administration aware of the concerns expressed we have heard the concerns we have heard the concerns but at this time there's nothing further I can say because as I'm sure you will appreciate that we have to have the appropriate discussions thank you thank you Thanks. Minister, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Minister. I'm not sure if this microphone is on. It is. Yes. Um, thank you. Minister, the, you said earlier that you didn't want to feel any questions on the, the upcoming um, appeal against sentences. No, and I'm not. I can't because yeah. it no, has I not... Say, I just want to say, Minister, that... Um, I think it's a great move, but um, Minister, the fact that you have made the matter public in the, in, the, in the interest of transparency, I think you should feel some questions. So no, we can, no, 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 hold on. I think you need to understand. It could, it could influence the quality of the bill. No, understand the process. It was a cabinet decision for this matter to be sent to the chief, okay. issued draft and instructions to the chief parliamentary council. The legislation has not yet been drafted, so there is not much more I can say on that. I know, but it is now a public matter. Yes, you have not but brought it to us as a public matter. Hope on. I think you are flogging a dead horse. Okay. We cannot say more on that. Okay. Allow the legislation to be drafted. It will be debated in parliament. We will have ample time to have discussions on the details. Uh, Minister, um, I have some concern about the, the question of res reciprocity, recip reciprocity, reciprocate, reciprocate arrangement <laughs> for Jamaicans getting visa to anywhere, because if we are relaxing the visa in the interest of good faith, it would be only sound appropriate to me that it should be done on both sides. Hope on, I'm say. sure you heard the minister say earlier on. No, but the minister didn't address it. The minister didn't address no, it. No, but the minister said that there is ongoing discussions between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Chinese. So therefore, I think you ought to leave it at that. When those discussions are completed, we'll update you. Yeah, but minister, I also noticed that I understand that the Chinese ambassador speaks English. And you have, uh, have asked us not to speak to him. Why, why is that so? The Chinese time? ambassador, when the press conference is over, if you have any questions that you wish to ask the Chinese ambassador, and if he wishes to answer, you may ask him after the press briefing. What even over. a reaction to this relaxation? Uh, we, we, Town, we do you have any further the questions? Do we have any other okay. question? Uh, Minister, um, tourism, honorable tourism minister. Hope Town, allow someone else and we'll come to you. Darren yeah. Luton from the Gleaner. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, Minister McNeil, just two questions for you. Um, the elegant corridor last year, and the sectorally announced the, the lighting of the corridor. Um, can you give us an update on that? Uh, my understanding is that it hasn't been ruled out. It, uh, you're understanding that one? It has, well, just give us an update. I just need. The lighting of the elegant Yes, the lighting of the elegant corridor. The, 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 when we had initially done it, the recommendation was for the lighting of the elegant corridor to be done um, with LED lights off the grid. We had some further discussions late last year with the National Works Agency and indicated that we wanted to, to explore the, whether or not 
even with all the discussions that had taken place before, whether the solar option was possible. Therefore, late last year, I think it may have been or November, December, the, the tenders for the lighting of the, the elegant when corridor the went out. Right, the tender. And right, and the tender was announced there. The, the tender went out, and what we did was to put out the tender for both grid and solar. My understanding is those tenders have now come back in and, and have been opened. The, the tenders will go to infrastructure committee, I, I suspect, in the next week or two, and an uh, announcement will be made as to the, the results of that tender. But just to say that the tender went out, um, the, 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 the bids have come in, and it is in the hands of the, the, the technical persons at the National Works Agency, and, and a recommendation will be made to Cabinet short term. I haven't looked close at the, at the supplementary budget, but I'm wondering if the funds will be um, sent forward to the next fina um, fisc fiscal year to deal with this. Quite, quite yes, absolutely. The funds, the funds for it are already identified and, and put in place for that. And uh, on the matter of funding, I take it to the min uh, white paper you table la last week on um, community tourism, some $1.2 billion, I think, just to lay the foundation to build it. Have you identified no, those funding? No, no, no. The, 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 uh, if, you, if you read it clearly, what, what the document speaks to is the, the fact that we need to develop community tourism. Um, in developing community tourism, there's a lot of infrastructure that's desirable. Not all is necessary at one time, but that it is desirable. Things like the roads, health centers in the area, um, signage, a, a number of issues. And, and, and the, the, the consultants and the ministry, in looking at it, looked at all the things that would be ideal for us as we develop community tourism. Now, it's not going to be done all at one time, and it's not all done by the Minister of Tourism. Um, they're all agencies, departments, is all part of it. And, and part of the important reason, one of the reasons why we do these policy documents is that the policy document is circulated so that all departments and agencies of government and private sector too can look and see what the direction of government is. So it's not a matter of having a budget in place for that as a specific item. It is Israel the policy. We are going to roll out uh, and already have a number of community tourism projects um, operating. What we're looking at is creating the framework so that we can get more and that persons who are interested are able to, to better access um, assistance with the um, human resource development, training, um, funding. There's funding available in a lot of cases, but we, we want to do it in a structured manner. So a lot of those things are put in. So, and, and remember, this is the green paper. We're, we're putting it out for discussion in a wide, in a wide way, and, and based on those discussions, it will come back and, and will be tabled as a white paper in Parliament for debate. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, Minister Faulkner, may I have a, a question of you? Um, in relation to a private member's motion passed by the Parliament, which, which would have been sent to Cabinet, we haven't heard much about it in relation to changing, renaming of the, uh, the throne speech. Has Cabinet discussed that matter as yet? It was discussed, but I think it was discussed briefly some time ago when the motion had gone, but we have not made a decision on, on that, no. You're aware that um, the cabinet um, should report to parliament, I think within 21 days of passing, the motion has been being sent by the house. What, what would be causing the delay at the level well, of the cabinet? Well, I can check with the cabinet secretary to find out what, what is the latest on that and let you know. Any further questions? Karel from the Jamaica Observer. Yes, um, I just wanted to know for the man from Mars, you mentioned about this visa waiver. What, what, do, what obtains now for a Chinese person to get a visa? But what do they have to go through? Could they walk me through that process? Do you know what, what obtains for the Chinese? somebody from China wanting to come to Jamaica? Where do they have to go? To All right. visa? You're asking what, at present, yes, at present. what happens? Yeah. Okay, our embassy is in Beijing, and at present what is required is for persons to get a visa from Beijing. 
So a, a number of persons, if they're in Beijing, they can go to the, the embassy and get it. But let's say a large part of our market is in the south, mm -hmm. you know, Shanghai, etc. So it's four or six hours to fly to Beijing to get a visa to go back to catch a flight to Jamaica. It, it's, it's, it's untidy, it's, it's difficult. It's, so given those restrictions, the growth of our, the market would definitely be limited. What we're doing now is to, 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 to lift those restrictions. We feel that the information that we get on the visa forms, we are, things are put in place so that we can capture them electronically and otherwise. And, and so we're, we're, we're lifting the requirements for travel to Jamaica by Chinese nationals for purposes of tourism for 30 days or less. And that is what is being put in place now in terms of, um, of the, the visa restrictions. Yeah, uh, one more question. Minister Powell has been quoted in the press um, saying that the decriminalization of marijuana will be on track by the end of the year. How do you feel this will impact your tourism mm -hmm. product? If marijuana is decriminalized. <laughs> uh, no, no um, I, uh, let's put it this way. I, I think from a, a tourism perspective, from a tourism perspective, I, I don't think that it, it could be a bad thing. Um, <laughs> the, the issue that we, we have in, in anything is that we have to, to determine how we do it and, and what is put in place to do these things. And I think that um, discussions took place in, in Parliament. It was a very um, lively debate. Um, something was sent to Cabinet. Um, we don't normally participate much in those debates, given the fact that it will come to Cabinet for a decision. Um, and, and once that decision is made, it will be properly, um, it will be properly sent out. Do we have any other questions? I have one quick question. Um, you recall Minister Senetec Engineering Company was awarded a contract under the Sugar Transformation Program, later mm -hmm. rescinded. Has that contract been re-awarded or has it, um, the approval to the contract award been given by Canada? I believe that the Ministry of Agriculture, I think the person, the, the company that came that was second on the list, that they were eventually awarded the contract. That's my understanding. I think that has been made public, yes. That would be chin construction, right? I believe so, yes. Thank you. Yes, we, we, just, yes, just yes, make sure that they're good <laughs> questions, <laughs> Hope Tom. Good questions on the door. You're struggling with the questions. <laughs> no, yes, you're really I, I, digging I, I, deep, I don't think time. so. I don't think so, Minister. Minister, um, the question of the lifting of visa requirements for Chinese to come to Jamaica, um, what mechanism are you put in place? at the tourism ministry to accommodate the language, the whole question of language, which um, is going to be a serious issue? That's a very good question, actually. Thank you. others, Let me say this. Um, interestingly, I, we have opened up other markets, the Latin American market. Um, last year, when we, when we met with um, the president of COPA came here when they had their conference. He, he was speaking of the importance of having Spanish-speaking Jamaicans in, in every property, given the extent to which the Latin American market is growing. Uh, the last year, we opened the Russian direct flights with Transera, the, opened up the Russian market. We have had phenomenal growth out of Russia. And we started a language-speaking courses across some of the resort areas. It was, it was in Negril, and interestingly, I was in Negril last week and visiting um, two properties and went to one of the properties and the, one of the persons who was there walked up and said, you know, Minister, um, how are you? Was, was very happy and lively and, and, and said to me, you know, he's doing the, 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 the Russian course and proceeded to speak, I mean, well, I, I don't speak <laughs> Russian, but fluently in Russian. So I mean, you, I was what very... You well, thought, what I was, you thought was fluent in Russian. I was, I was very impressed <laughs> with, with it. And, and, and he, he was speaking and he said to me that all courses, we had put a time frame on the courses 
and, and try to move them around because of the limitation we had. However, he was saying, look, we need to find a way because when the visitors come, as, a, as, a, as Russians come, they, they, they call for him and two others in the hotel that, mm -hmm. that have done the course, and he rushes over, and, and he loves it, and he says everybody wants to do it, and, and they're really proud of what they're doing. Now, I think similarly, when we open up the market and we see the numbers increasing, and it will take us some time. There's a, there's a lot of work that has to be done. We have to go into the market in terms of the, the marketing um, behind the, the gates. We have, to, we have to look at the airlift. It's a long distance, very difficult. All of these things are going to take substan substantial time, but we are in the process of looking at these things. But one of the things will be for us to look at the, the cultural likes and dislikes of the visitors who are coming. So one will be the languages, other things like looking at the cuisine, different things, Chap how chapstick. we do it to, to enjoy it. So exactly all of these things will be things that we, will be looked at in the sector. But I, I'm just saying that the, 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 our stakeholders are, understand the importance and, and are very excited about doing these things. And, and quite frankly, all of these programs that we have put in place have been oversubscribed and are doing very well. Okay. Minister, um, another concern, Minister, is you said business persons, only for vac um, persons on vacation. So business persons who want to do business trips to Jamaica um, to make investment, etc., they will not get this visa or they will have to go and get a visa? The the visa is for persons, uh, is for visitors for 30 days are left for tourism purposes. They are different. I, 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 not, I would, may not be the best person to have the discussion, but I suspect that over a period of time you need um, work, um, work permits, etc. But if someone is coming for a short period of time, if you, if you travel to the United States for a week and to go and meet somebody to, to have a meeting, you're not going to apply for a work permit. So I, I think that those are n things that will be worked out. Our arrangement here, which sort of answers part of the question you were asking before, our here is, is to deal with the tourism as it relates to us. In, in Jamaica, wanting to open up this important market um, that, that everyone in the world is looking to, to as well. So we're looking at that. On the controversial issue of the jet skis, you said the lifting of the moratorium and the issuing of, of license um, will be curtailed, um, or be resumed? So, what what sorry. do you mean by that? You said that the lifting of the moratorium okay. on the issuing of license for, for commercial jet yes. skis or something. Will right. be, uh, am I hearing you correctly? Yes, you're hearing me correctly. What do you mean by that? All right. What had happened is in 1998, despite after some accidents, in, in 1998, after some accidents, a moratorium was put in place for um, Negril, Montego Bay, and Ocho Rios that did not allow any new um, players in the market for commercial purposes. In 2004, this was extended island wide. We take so, one. Oh, so, sorry, so, what, so what has happened is that over the last number of years, you don't have new entrants in the market. So a lot of persons have gone out and gotten jet skis and use them illegal, commercially illegally. Because, and, and part of the reason is even if they wanted to, they couldn't apply. What we have determined to do is we are going to regulate this. Um, in regulating it, there are a number of things that have to be done. The first is all jet skis have to be licensed and have to have their decal in place. If we see a, a jet ski without a decal, we know that that jet ski. And then secondly, those there will be an application process and all persons who have an interest will apply to the Maritime Authority and to TPDCO. And what will happen is that they, they will be looked at. They will have to follow all the license requirements, things such as having um, insurance in place, training, um, launch areas, um, rescue boats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And all these things will have to be put in place because it is our intention to formally regulate this this area and and, and put proper controls on it. We take one final question from Darren Luton. Minister McNeil, uh, 
ear travel, you, you, you touched on it as one ear that you're working with, but, but can you speak more to that issue of ear travel, Jamaica, China, in order to grow tourism? No, it's, it's, it's early days for that. Um, it, obviously, we're not going to go into the market with direct flights. We're going to have to look, working with partners, um, to see how we can do um, the travel. A lot of it may, by first instant, have to be multi-destination. Mm -hmm. We'll have to look at the persons. There are a lot of flights into places like Houston. We have some in New York, D different areas, and, and you know, it, you know, even some of our Caribbean countries where we have, um, where we can look at this. So what we will do is we go now to the trade show. There's the outgoing, there's the outbound trade shows are held annually in the period of about. It's, it's in April. Um, you meet with the travel agents, the tour operators who actually move people, and then you have discussions with them to see what the possibilities are. Um, you look at the airlift arrangements in place, how we can make airlift deals with it. As I said, it's a process. Um, it's, it's similar to how we had to deal with the Russian market. Um, it's, a, it's a process of building, and then usually you come to a point where you actually sort of pass over a threshold and it opens up properly, but there will be a lot of work that has to take place in the initial part to really to really realize the potential of this market. And 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 but but given the potential importance or the importance of this potential market, we feel it is necessary. And and we have we don't do it at our own peril. So we are going in with the intention of of really going to this market. Jamaica has. A, really strong brand, brand recognition and, and we are very hopeful and I, I really want to thank the ambassador and his team for the work they have done with us in, in helping us to, to develop all these initiatives that we are now undertaking. Thank you Minister. Before, before we wrap up Hopeton, bef Hopeton, before we wrap up, we said the last question, before we wrap up we invite the Mr. Fabio Pitaluga from Digital Jam. I know I have killed his name, but <laughs> he will tell us what the proper pronunciation is, and he wants to say a couple of words, make a few comments about Digital Jam. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first Have of all, you, you pronounced... Join us Just up here? come up here. Oh. Yes. <laughs> what the pronunciation of your name is. No, it's absolutely perfect. Pit, pit, no, pit so it's, it's okay, no, no surprises bad. there. No. <laughs> no, I just wanted to bring to the attention of, of the press that we're going to have a press conference tomorrow at the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining with um, the Honorable State Minister Julian Robinson for anything that relates to Digital Jam. Digital Jam will happen March 1st and 2nd uh, at the UE headquarters uh, uh, on, on campus. Uh, I've got some cards here that I can distribute. Uh, we'll have a number of top officials uh, from companies from the Silicon Valley, from the US, uh, from other places in the Western Hemisphere as well. We will be having a, um, a, a round table, the first round table discussion on angel investing in Jamaica with uh, organized jointly with DBJ, PSOJ, and JAMPRO and also um, a possibility of crowdfunding. And so it's, it's kind of a series of very interesting uh, discussions that we're having. We'll also have a number of CEOs uh, of uh, key incubators and accelerators uh, to try to really uh, establish a tech entrepreneurship environment uh, here in Jamaica as a hub for the Caribbean. So I'd really uh, like to invite the press uh, tomorrow. Darren, you have a question? I wanted to know what exactly is, is Digital Jam and what is it hope to achieve? So it's like a session. <laughs> so, so Digital Jam is, is an initiative uh, jointly done by the government of Jamaica and the World Bank in partnership. Uh, we've launched it at King's House about uh, three months ago in uh, November and uh, it includes a competition for uh, mobile apps development uh, that has been launched Caribbean wide. We've had 180 uh, teams participating throughout the Caribbean, uh, about 56 of which made it to the finals. Uh, that's about 160 young kids from all over the Caribbean who are coming to Kingston this weekend. Uh, and we'll be pitching 
um, their ideas and their prototype. Uh, um, we also have had a number of workshops uh, throughout the region uh, to promote uh, online uh, work opportunities. Uh, and we're having two companies from the Silicon Valley uh, right here in town right now, um, Crowdflower and Mobile Works, uh, who are today at NCU. Um, and uh, there will be uh, running workshops, uh, uh, basically illustrating how you can um, go online and work uh, legitimately, do legitimate work and be paid, uh, um, which is very important for issues of unemployment, especially for small markets like Jamaica, because you can have uh, access to a global market uh, and uh, earn also foreign exchange in the, in the process. Uh, and so there will be demonstrations uh, and uh, workshops at the conference itself, so where people can come in. We set up uh, two rooms with computers and connectivity. You can you know, young person Anyone can go. Come? Anybody can just visit. This is free, uh, so anybody can can visit. Uh, the we have a Facebook page where registration can happen. It's uh, uh, facebook.com/slash/digitaljam3, and uh, there's a link there where you can register via Eventbrite. But it's free and it's open to the public. Thank you thank so much, you. and we want to thank all of you for coming this morning. We want to thank the minister. Mr. Morrison, all our guests, yes, the Chinese yes, ambassador, yes. for gracing us with his presence. Thank you, sir. We want to thank Jerry and Mr. Peter La Luga from the World Bank. I got it right. Great. And we want to thank the press for joining us. We have no briefing next week. Those of you who watch the calendar, you will know that it is Ash Wednesday. It's a public holiday in Jamaica. And so we want to wish all of you a wonderful rest of the week. And to our viewers on PBCJ and the World Wide Web, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks, Minister.